Thank you for tuning in to worship with us here at the Burbridge Pentecostals in Burbridge, Louisiana. We're so glad that you've chosen to be with us today. Stay tuned after service for more information regarding our social media outlets and giving opportunities. We sincerely hope that today is a day of blessing, healing, and restoration in your life. Service will begin momentarily. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord together. Come on, let's praise Him together right now. Come on, church. Oh, Master, you're so well able, God. You're so well able, God. Oh, I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a God we serve. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I, I feel his presence this morning. How about you? Amen. I feel his presence. If you're online, you ought to be feeling the presence of the Lord like we feel in here. You, amen. Take it liberty to worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God in your Bibles uh, this morning in the book of 1 Samuel, in the word of the Lord, 1 Samuel uh, chapter number 30, and uh, beginning at verse... Uh, number uh, six in the word of the Lord. And while you're turning there, praise God, we certainly give honor today to Pastor and Sister Haygood, and we're praying for them that they have a wonderful time and rest, and we're going to cover them in prayer. We certainly love them, little Levi, and we pray for that they have a joyous time and, and a safe return in Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel chapter number 30, and beginning at verse 6. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David, and David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. I don't know about y'all, I like the sound of that. So David went, he and his 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Bezar, where there were left behind, stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 abode behind, and were so faint that they could not go over the brook Bezor. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread nor drank any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man, an Egyptian servant to an Amalekite. My master left me because three days ago I fell sick. Praise God. Let's pray together. Father, Lord Jesus, right now, God, we ask you that you give us favor today. Lord, we need a visitation of your glory, your anointing, God. Let every spirit be destroyed. God, we claim the victory for every one of the sound of my voice right now. Their homes, their families, their marriages, every situation, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus against every demonic force. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Can we clap our hands? Can we shout in the name of Jesus together? Can you do it one more time in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as you continue to worship the Lord. Praise God. What a God He is. Praise God. I, I want to go back and I'm kind of reading the kind of uh, the aftermath, uh, the aftermath expression and the aftermath faith and the aftermath prayer of something that had already happened. And David had a choice to make. He was going to give up. Or he's going to pray. Praise God. He's going to give up. Or he's going to press on. Praise God. And so the scripture said in 1 Samuel chapter 30, it begins by saying, 
And it came to pass with David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziglag, smitten Ziglag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, neither great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no power to weep. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Have you ever, ever been in a situation that it just crushed you? Crushed you. You ever had that feeling? Something just crushed you. Oh, God, you know, sometimes people will disappoint you. and They'll crush you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I had a situation and we're no nobody's without sin nobody's without failure but uh amen I had a situation and and uh, somebody I won to the Lord many years ago and grew up in the church uh, you know in the church and left to evangelize and had uh, ministry 20 something years successful evangelistic ministry powerfully used to God and uh, I had a dream about him I'll never forget it and uh, he was sitting in a truck, and uh, in this dream, he was trying to talk to me, but his teeth come, I know it kind of sounds crazy, but his teeth kept coming out of his mouth, and he tried to shove them back in. And I woke up, and these words was coming out of my mouth, in, out of my sleep. I was saying, he's got a false mouth. He's got a false mouth. And so it hit me, so it just smote me. And I had a burden. I knew something was wrong. And uh, so I called him, asked him to meet with me to eat. And we sat at the table. I said, brother, if he sees this, he knows I'm telling the truth. I said, brother, something ain't right with you. I said, something ain't right. I said, no, we need to talk. I said, you need to open up to me. I can help you. But if you don't open up to me, I said, it's, you're coming crashing down. Praise God. And uh, we talked a little while. And anyway, he just, you know, baby, he, basically he told me it was just pizza, you know. but nothing wrong with him. But I'm going to tell you, praise God, when I, met, when I got the phone call, praise God, somebody called me and said, you need to pray for your friend, he's in trouble. And, uh, and, and anyway, it all come out, all come crashing down. You know, sometimes the only thing worse than your sin is the way you respond to it. Huh? I said, sometimes the only thing worse than your sin is the way you respond to it. And when it all started crashing down on him, instead of him being humble and broken, he got angry. He got angry that he got caught. He got angry and he, he wanted to just, uh, you know, I told somebody the other day, uh, anyway, I won't get into all that, but said he called him and he was, uh, you know, uh, anyway. <laughs> and uh, point being is, is that I told the preacher, I said, well, here's the problem. He's never been broken for what he's done. He's never sobbed and cried one time, never wept one time. Scripture said, Godly sorrow worketh repentance. And you've got to have, listen, what I'm saying is, is that uh, uh, the trouble had done happen, uh, the, 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 the reaping what you sow had already begun. But he could have, he could have saved his marriage. He could have saved himself. But he never got under conviction, never wept uh, to this, as far as I know to this day. And has went on and uh, remarried and went on about his way and, and still trying to, you know, act like he's in the ministry. But nobody wants him to preach. But, you know, in his mind, he's still the same. Man. Because, see, if you build an image and you don't build a prayer life and you don't build a relationship, Come on, you're going to be in trouble, saint or preacher. Don't matter who you are. You got to have, Brother Melton, we miss you when you're not here. Praise God. You and, amen. Uh, you and your precious little wife, we miss y'all. We miss you. And I, uh, I miss the time of you up here praying, you know, on prayer nights and stuff. And so, so uh, uh, we miss one another when we're not here, praise God. And we, we miss uh, not being able to get together. But the reason I miss you, Brother Melton, it's cause on prayer nights when we could pray like we need to, you pray. Hallelujah. Pray, pray, pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
And so we got to pray together. We can't give the devil one ounce. We can't give him one inch. We got to keep on pressing on. Praise God. We got to keep on praying on. Keep on worshiping on. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you that uh, uh, I brought that young man's story up. Of course, he's not a young man anymore. But, uh, but I brought his story up because uh, when I found out about it, I wept so I cried I couldn't even see the road for the shape he was in. But I was more broken over his sin in a situation than he was. And I went to his house and wept and cried with him. He just soiled up like a bullfrog. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's not going to do you no good. If you're in here today and you're in trouble, uh, being soiled up about it ain't going to do you no good. You got to be broken. You got to cry. You got to, hey, God can fix it. I want to tell you if you're online watching, no matter how bad it is in your marriage, in your family, God can fix it. But you got to get broken before God. You got to get broken in His presence. Come on, somebody worship the Lord. You got to cry and weep before the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. God's kingdom needs more praying people. Hallelujah. We got to have more praying people. Thank God for a pastor that's, uh, that's led us in prayer. Praise God. Led us in prayer. And I, I thought something about him yesterday. Praise God. That I, I had never seen. No other preacher I know. Now, they may do it, but I don't know any personally. Praise God. So if you're preaching, you're watching. I'm not trying to offend you. But I don't know any preacher personally that gives up every Saturday night. I don't really know one. But as far as I know, on Saturday night since I've been here, he's always been at this church early, praying, studying all night long. Praise God. Hallelujah. And sometimes sometimes we'll end up on about an hour prayer meeting on the phone with him and Brother Marcelli praying together. And so, uh, hallelujah. Yeah, he said something one night preaching. I kind of laughed, but I thought, yeah, he's kind of picking about that, but he's serious too. He's talking, you know, other, everybody else is tagging deers, you know. But he said, if I see a man laying on the ground, I'm going to tag that, praise God. Hallelujah. And he meant that. Hallelujah. Praise God, because his heart is passionate for the kingdom of God. So, so we don't have any excuse not to pray. We got a pastor that's led us in prayer. Hallelujah. He's taught us how to pray. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you that I want you to understand the situation that David was facing. I want to back up just a moment. And uh, at this particular moment, uh, understand that uh, uh, Saul and his army was chasing David. And so David was an outsider on the run. Matter of fact, if you go back and previously read, and if you got time, you can, go back and find out what I'm telling you is true that David had went and joined himself to the Philistines. That's what he did. And he had, uh, had went under uh, and had become a servant of another man. And he was fighting for this man's household. Wasn't fighting for those Philistine army, but he's fighting for this man's household. And this man, amen, his army was protecting David because, uh, but David didn't need no help. He had, he, had a, he had 300 bad boys. He didn't know it, praise God. But I'm telling you, they could take care of anything. Matter of fact, the scripture said they could kill a man at a hand's breadth. Now, you know, everybody else, amen, anybody ever used a slingshot? I'm not talking about the kind you pull back. I'm talking about the kind you swing. Not too many of us have. I hadn't, praise God. I always use the kind you pull back. But they used the ones you, you know, you had to sling the stone. And uh, everybody, uh, you know, normal soldiers, normal warriors, they had to put that stone in there and up above their head sling it before they threw it. But not David's men. The Bible said David's men, a hand breath, could flick their wrists and take a man's head off, praise God. They were some bad guys, praise God. They was an army that meant business, hallelujah. And so, but uh, David, for protection, had joined himself to this, uh, to this master uh, in this house, a high leader in the Philistine army. But they were getting ready to go to battle with the Jews. And so uh, the other leaders got concerned about it. And they came to, uh, came to David's master that he had submitted himself to, so to speak. 
and said, you got to get rid of him <laughs> because if we go to fighting those Jews, they're going to turn on us in the middle of that battle and start fighting with their brothers, praise God. And so David got fired. Amen. Y'all know David just got fired. He got fired and those other men got fired, praise God. And actually it was about 600 of them according to Scripture, but 300 of them, they were something else, praise God. And so uh, here comes David and those 600 men on their way back, praise God. And uh, when they get back, they just got fired now. They got to go home and tell their wives they ain't got no job. And they come back and they look and the city that their families are in has burned to the ground. And they get there and their wives and kids are taken captive. And all of a sudden, isn't it just like us? All of a sudden, it's David's fault. Wonder how many of us do that to pastor. Amen. Things don't go well. All of a sudden, it's pastor's fault. Huh? All of a sudden, your fault, my marriage is in trouble. All of a sudden, it's your fault, my finances are in trouble. All of a sudden, it's your fault that things aren't going well. David hadn't changed nothing. He was still David. He was still the leader. He was still a man of prayer. But they all turned on David because things did not go well for them. Let's do not get under the curse of foolishness and blame our pastor when things aren't going well. Come on, somebody praise God. Let's hold his hands up. Let's hold him up before the Lord. We need him strong in the Holy Ghost, praise God. Come on, clap your hands and shout to the Lord in here. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Praise God. I, I, I'm not, don't, too many times I just preach and I never hardly get subtitles for messages or whatever. But last night in prayer, the Lord spoke to me and I wrote it down. And He said, A heart to recover all. Praise God. That's what I want to give my people. I want to give them a heart to recover all. Everything they've lost. Everything that's been taken. I don't know about you, but I want God to bless you with everything you've lost. In the overload, in your households, in your families, in your finances, with your children, with your grandchildren, on your job, in your education, whatever it might be, I want you to recover all. And guess what God wants you to recover all? He wants you to get it all back, praise God. Somebody ought to let the devil know, I come to church this morning to get it all back. I want to get it all back. If you lost your joy, time to get your joy back. If you lost your peace, time to get your peace back. Come on, clap your hands and praise him in here. Woo! My Lord, hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise in here. Amen. Kind of, you know, we don't we need to be wide uh, wide awake. Uh, <laughs> wide awake in church. Wide awake in his presence. This is no place to go to sleep. This is no place to take a break. Some of you put more action when you're hunting and fishing than you do in your worship when you come to church. You can stand up all day long in a boat and fish, but you can't stand up in church. Come on, you can throw your hands out all day with a rod and reel, but not one time lift your hands up in church. You got your priorities wrong. You need to get your praise and worship. You need to put everything in the kingdom of God and get excited about coming to church. Come on, somebody praise God. Come on, somebody worship Him. You say, my kids don't get excited about going to church. Well, maybe you're not excited about going to church. Come on, somebody praise God in here. Maybe you're not excited about praising. Maybe you're not excited about worshiping. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise in the house. Hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands and praise him in here. Mighty God. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. you may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. David, the Bible said, David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. Amen. And uh, I, I don't know. We can, we can, we can uh, go back and forth on whether it was right or not about David putting on the ephod. But I'm telling you, David was desperate. And David told the priest that was with him, said, can I borrow that ephod? Hallelujah. That's right. That's what he said. Bring me ephod. 
Hallelujah. And uh, amen. It'd be like us saying, give me your mantle, praise God. And uh, he, the scripture said he wrapped himself in that ephod. And he went and cried, but with the Lord, he got wrapped up. Let me tell you what we got to do. If we're going to recover what God's got for us, we got to get wrapped up in what God's doing. We got to get wrapped up in what God's doing in the church. Come on, somebody praise God in here. You need to get wrapped up in worship, wrapped up in praise, wrapped up in prayer, wrapped up in conduct. Hey, you know what? God's blessing this church. We're wrapped up in giving. We're wrapped up in giving. Come on. I said we're wrapped up in giving. We give. The more we give, the more we want to give. Come on, somebody worship God. Somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody worship the Lord. In the name of Jesus. If you don't think give his work for this church, look around you. Look how good God's been to us. Look how God has blessed us. Look how God's blessed our health. Look how God's blessed our wealth. Look how God's blessed our families. Look how God's blessed our spirits. Come on, somebody praise God. Hey, devil, we're going to keep on sowing whether you like it or not. We're going to sow, 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 and we're going to grow, grow, grow. Come on, clap your hands, shout in the Lord, and do not lose the spirit of giving in the work of the Lord. Praise God. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, I pray right now. Come on, we in the last days. I pray right now, spirit of prayer wraps us up. I pray right now, a, a spirit of worship wraps us up. And I pray a spirit of giving stays on us. Hallelujah. Brother, brother Coke said it a little earlier. Amen. He said, I can't wait to get in that new church when we got more room. You know what? If we got more room, how I many you know we're going to have more people? Come on, somebody praise God in here. We're going to have more praisers, more worshipers, more givers. Come on, somebody love God in here. Devil like it or not, we're going to get all wrapped up. We're going to get all wrapped up in what God is doing. We're going to get all wrapped up in revival. We're going to get all wrapped up in the harvest. Come on, clap your hands and shout in the Lord. Do it in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, I feel him right now. Come on, I feel him right now. Come on, I feel him right now. Oh, Master, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, see, God knew David's heart. God knew. Let me tell you something. God knows your heart. God knows what's in your heart. How many of you know that we're your treasure is that's what the scripture says how do you know where your treasure is there will be your heart also hallelujah hallelujah some people never ever understand the, the treasured heart of prayer they never understand the treasured heart of the harvest persons never want a soul don't understand what it is to win souls Amen. But you get a man that wins souls, he gets addicted to it. He can't live without winning souls. Let me tell you something. I'll rebuke the spirit that tells us that we cannot win souls in this revival. I'll rebuke the spirit that tells us that we can't teach Bible studies in this epidemic that they're calling it. Praise God. We not it. Well, listen, I, I get a little loose, okay, and I don't mean to. But you, you can be seated. But when I say we're not in the epidemic, <laughs> don't get upset at me. Okay? We're in a problem. There is a problem. We do have a crisis. But, but, but we also under the hand of the Almighty God. Now, we're not being foolish. We're doing what we can. We're abiding by the rules. We're doing what's right. But whatever we do, do not let the devil box up your faith or your voice. You can still witness to people. You can still... Come on, invite people to the house of God. You can still flow in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody praise God in here. We can still 
pray people through the Holy Ghost. We can still baptize people in Jesus' name. And we're going to keep on having revival like an Olympic devil. Broke Bridge Pentecostal Church is going to keep on having the harvest, keep on having revival. Come on, somebody worship the Lord in here. Well, now I'm not in any way. Praise God. I, I know it's real. Believe me. Believe me. I lost my brother-in-law. Preached his funeral to this right here. It's real. And, and everybody's been touched with this. And it's and when it's affecting your families, your household, whatever, uh, it becomes more real to you. But it's real. But I want to tell you something. Still, in the middle of this, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And God doesn't want us to get under a spirit of fear. God wants us to have faith. Praise God. How many of you know that if there's a dog that's been biting people? <laughs> How many of y'all know y'all get around that dog and that dog knows y'all scared of him? How many of y'all think he's going to come up and lick your hand? What's he going to do? He's going to bite you. Don't have fear of this spirit. Don't be afraid. Walk in faith. And say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God's kept me all these years. I believe he's going to keep on keeping me. Come on, somebody worship God in here. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Well, I know I'm preaching faith. That's the only thing that's going to help us. If I preach doubt and unbelief, you're going to eat that. Praise God. So I'm going to preach faith to you. I'm going to preach God's going to keep you. I'm going to preach God's going to bless you. I'm going to keep God's going to bless your health. God's going to bless your wealth. God's going to bless your families. God's going to bless your marriages. God's going to take care. And guess what, devil? God's going to give it all back. He's going to give our children back. He's going to give our families back. God's going to give our finances back. Come on, somebody worship the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout in the Lord. Shout in the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel him. Praise God. I'm preaching about a heart to recover all. Because if we got the wrong heart, we're not going to get nothing back. But if we got the right heart, we got the right heart. Praise God. God said, David, get up and go. I'm going to go with you. And guess what, David? You're going to recover all. Everything. Pursue him. I'm with you, David. You're going to recover all. Well, you know, that's good enough. God said it. Why well, I got to fool with anybody else on the way to my victory? Why have I got to slow down to help anybody else if God's done said what he's going to do? But God knew David's heart. And so the Bible said, but, ba but David pursued he and the 400 men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint, they could not go over the brook Bezor. And they found an Egyptian in the field. And they brought him to David. And, they, and he was given to him bread. And he did eat. And they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs. 200 clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread, nor drank any water three days and three nights. David said to him, To whom belongest thou? Whence art thou? And he said, I'm a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. And my master left me because three days ago I fell sick. We made an evasion upon the south of the Cherethites, upon the coast that belonged to Judah, upon the south of Caleb. And we burned Ziglag with fire. David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt not neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I'll bring thee down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon the earth, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. Praise God. How many of you know David would not have got anything back if he hadn't stopped and helped the wounded. 
Come on now. How many know that if David had not stopped and helped somebody that was in trouble, that David would not have got everything that God had for him back? What did David have to stop for? A man that God had already told him what he was going to do. What did David have to stop and do with one Egyptian that had kept him in bondage for 400 years? What did David have to do fooling with somebody that had their heritage had been wrong and ugly to them? You know why David stopped? Because David had the right heart. God knew who to anoint king. He knew who to pour the oil over his head. He knew who to make their leader that was going to lead them into the blessings of God. Come on, somebody praise God in here. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't stop and help nobody else, you're not going to get nothing. Come on, somebody praise God. If we don't spend our time picking up the wounded and broke bridge, we're not going to have revival. We're not going to have the harvest. Come on, somebody praise God in here. Somebody ought to let the devil know, I'm going to pick the wounded up. I'm going to feed the lost. I'm going to feed the hungry. Come on, somebody praise God. Somebody lift your hands up and worship the Lord. Come on, lift your hands up. My God, I feel him right now. Oh, Lord. Come on. Come on, church. Come on. God knows the heart of this church. The heart of this church is for the lost. The heart of this church is for the bleeding. The heart of this church is for the wounded. Oh, come on, somebody worship God. Hallelujah. Somebody worship the Lord. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, if you're at home watching live, you ought to lift your hands up and begin to worship God and say, God, help me to help the wounded. And if you're a wounded person, we want to help you today. We want you to know God loves you. Backslider, we come to get you today. Come on, we're pursuing the devil. We're trying to get all the backsliders back in the church devil you're not going to keep our children you're not going to keep our loved ones they're going to come back home come on somebody praise God somebody call upon the Lord somebody call upon the Lord in the house come on somebody worship him oh master oh God hallelujah Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel like God's wanting to feed the wounded today. I feel like God's wanting to feed the wounded today. He's wanting to feed their spirits. He's wanting to feed their souls. Come on, let's worship the Lord, church. Come on, let's do it. Oh, God. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Come on, church. Come on, God wants to give us a heart to recover all, but we're not going to recover anything if we don't have a burden for the lost, if we don't have a burden for the wounded. That's what I was. I was an old wounded Egyptian. And it, come on, come on, a drug dealer, an alcoholic. Amen. Sister Talbert smoked four or five packs of cigarettes a day. Come on, we were bound by this old world. But you know what? Somebody come after the lost. Somebody come after an old wounded Egyptian. Come on, somebody love God in here. The world had me. He loved me. He tore me. Hallelujah. He loved me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. This would be a good time. This would be a good time to pray, God, make me a soul winner. God, help me to pick up the wounded, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, let's pray. I, I'm, not preaching a, I'm not preaching a message of an indictment against us. I know the heart of this church. Praise God. I know you love people. I know you love souls. I know you love the kingdom of God. That's the reason the devil is in trouble. This is a praying church. 
This is a revival church. This is a burdened church. And devil lack it a little bit. We're not going to quit winning lost souls. We're going to keep on picking up the wounded. Come on, somebody worship God. You know, if you reach for somebody else, God's going to reach into your household. God's going to reach your family. While you picking up somebody else, God's going to send somebody your children, and God's going to pick them up. He's going to pick up your grandchildren. He's going to pick up your lost loved ones. Come on, somebody worship the Lord. Come on, church, let's worship him. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody worship him. My God, I feel him. Why don't I have a couple more? We got a little more room up here for a few more to come pray. You know what I want you to do? I want you to come and ask God baptize me with a burden to pick up the wounded. Because if we can pick up the wounded, we're going to recover it all. We're going to recover everything. Come on, somebody worship him. Come on. The Bible said, and David said to him, come thou bring me down to this company. So the Bible said, when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all of the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. Praise God. They were having a party. They were having a party. Praise God. But they didn't know the party was over. They didn't know the party was over. God was about to turn it around. God was about to move. You know what the devil's been having? The devil's been having a party. He's been rejoicing about what he took from you. He's been rejoicing about what he's done to your children. He's been rejoicing about what he's done to your family. He's been rejoicing about what he's done to your finances. But devil, your party's over. We've come with a right heart to recover it all. And we know the way into God's kingdom. Come on, somebody touch God. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. If we'll worship him, if we'll cry and weep for the lost, if we'll intercede, we're going to have that great harvest. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Come on, that's the Holy Ghost moving. Come on, let's pray. All over the church, let's pray. All over the house, let's pray. Come on, the Bible said, well, while Peter yet spake the word, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard the word. God's going to fall on us right here. God's going to fall on families at home right now. Come on, wherever you're at, if you're with your family at home, get with your family, get them up next to you and begin to pray with them. Come on. Come on, we're going to pray here. We're going to lift our voices up. Hallelujah. Devil, I know you don't like it, but we're going to still keep picking the wounded up. We're going to still keep having revival. Brother Blanchard, they're going to have revival in Honduras. They're going to have that great harvest. Come on, somebody praise God in here. Come on, let's lift our voices up. Let's cry out for the lost. Why don't you pray for your brothers and sisters' children? Why don't you pray for the church? Why don't you pray for the harvest in the house? Oh, Lord. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel him right now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God knew who to trust with the blessings. God knew who to trust with the right heart. Come on. David could not walk by the wounded. David could not walk by the wounded. Guess what, devil? We're not going to walk by the wounded. We're going to help the alcoholic. We're going to help the drug addict. We're going to go in the slums. We're going to go where they're at. We're going to love them. We're going to pray for them. We're going to weep for them. Please don't think I'm crazy. But when I pray and I'm crying, sometimes I just cry for the whole world. I don't know what the needs are. I don't know where the little children are. I don't know 
where the hungry are. I don't know where everybody's at, but God knows. Brother, Brother Coke, I just start weeping for the whole world and my heart just melts and I say, God, you know where they're at. You know the need, God. Oh, somehow I feel those tears are moving in situations that only God can move in. Come on, Messiah. I feel like the Lord tells angels, you got to get over there and help that little boy. you got to get over there and help that family. As a preacher in Bro Bridge, Louisiana, that's weeping tears. Church, your tears are changing things. Church, your tears are going to bring revival. It's going to bring the harvest. Come on, that's it. Lift your voices up. Come on, let's begin to intercede. Let's begin to intercede. Come on. Come on, pray, pray, pray. God, I want you to pour a burden out in us. Pour a burden out in our spirits. Come on. You know what's happening right now? While you weeping, God's reaching your children. God's reaching your families. God's moving in a financial situation. God's going to move in that job situation. Come on, pray. We appreciate your attendance. We would like to invite you to tune in with us weekly and share your worship service experiences with someone else on Facebook or YouTube. Also, for other anointed and inspirational clips, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter. If you would like to give, please follow the links below for further instructions. We pray that the Lord would bless you and strengthen your home this week. We thank you for worshiping with us, and we invite you to worship with us again in our next service.